Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Attic YouTube channel. I'm Mike. How you doing? It's time once again to take a look at what physical media, Blu-rays, DVDs, etc. that I picked up. And uh, following that, this time around, uh, a couple more entries to the Pantheon of my favorite movies of all time. Plus a new bookshelf segment that I've been promising. Uh, so let's take a look at what I've uh, picked up that's uh, special. I was hoping to have my Vinegar Syndrome January order by now, but um, what can you do? Uh, so moving on, got a few items from Shout Factory slash Scream Factory, starting with this um, website exclusive, uh, Blood Fist. I got this. Uh, because my DVD is full screen and this is not, so I've got that. This has been out for uh, a while, a long time, uh, but I finally got uh, Terror in the Isles. And I got that to upgrade this VHS, which you can see is a former rental. And I got Screamers, which has also been out for a while, to upgrade this VHS. Got one Arrow title, and again, something that's not new. Uh, finally uh, got it for a decent price. Alice Sweet Alice, which will upgrade this VHS. From Mondo Macabro, um, one that's been out for quite some time, this uh, DVD, Alucarda. I got this because I realized that I had the, D, uh, the VHS in my collection. I've had it in my collection a long time. I'd never watched it um, under a different title. Uh, so I picked this up to uh, upgrade that, but I'm going to keep the tape for now. Got a couple from uh, Warner Archive through Amazon. Got Sphinx. This is one that I had first seen and owned on VHS a long time ago. And I can now upgrade that VHS. And then because uh, the price dropped uh, dramatically, I picked up Forbidden Hollywood Volume 6 with those four films. Um, I want to get all ten volumes of this. I have volume one. Uh, most of them hover around $25 or so on Amazon. This one one day for some reason just dropped to 15 so I bought it right away. So I have volume one and six and I'll get the rest eventually. From Synapse. Relatively new, but not brand new. Picked up Creature from the Black Lake. And uh, this one will upgrade a uh, VHS that I'm keeping. I have that, uh, I have it on VHS under a different title, but um, got that. And I picked up The Kindred, which has been out a little while. To upgrade this VHS. It's a lot of upgrading. Then uh, I went to my local Target and I was dismayed to see just how much further they had compressed the DVD and Blu-ray section into almost nothing. But I did find that they had taken some of the stuff that had been on a shelf you know, displayed and shoved it into an end, the end of an aisle on some racks just haphazardly um, like it was not worth anything. Um, but I went through that and found a couple Blu-rays uh, for $9.99 each. And actually with a coupon, I actually got one for like $5. But I picked up these newer releases of Licorice Pizza, which, which I saw in, in theaters and uh, enjoyed. And The Suicide Squad, which 
I would have got eventually. <laughs> and then, um, I've been going on about how you know, I put myself on a budget, which is still true, and that I've been trying not to spend as much money, which I mean, is still true. Uh, but recently, happily, I got a uh, nice promotion at work, so I treated myself to uh, visiting uh, all of the local antique malls and flea markets in the area. And so you're going to see that for a large chunk of the video after this, um, all the pickups from those places. Um, but I did want to spotlight some of the items I got from one particular booth at one particular flea market because they had some really decent stuff. And then uh, I'll show you the rest. Um, but from this one uh, booth, I got these items. From MVD double feature of Black Eagle and Lionheart and like other uh, MVD double features like this they are widescreen even though it doesn't say so and this one will upgrade these to VHS so that was great this next one I could not believe I, f I found I um, didn't really even know it was on DVD uh, of course I never checked but it's such an obscure little movie, and I have it on VHS. Um, but it's a very low-budget uh, horror anthology with friends like these. And I'm keeping my tape for now, but I was just amazed to see this. This is an old DVD. This is a 1998 DVD. And it even looks a little strange. Um, opens up like there's a little tray inside. And the uh, company is DVD Limited because that's creative. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't believe I found this on DVD. I grabbed it up. Um, I don't know if this will ever get a better release, but it's a pretty decent little horror anthology. This guy right here is a uh, refrigerator sludge monster. <laughs> but uh, this was cool find um, yeah I don't know if the uh, person with this booth had picked up the recent arrow collection of Juan grudge films but anyway I got this double feature of Juan white ghost and Juan black ghost part of the um, franchise then uh, this Mill Creek tri triple feature of 90s Gamera films. That was pretty cool. I actually found a Synapse disc, A Better Place. Found a nice uh, Warner Brothers DVD of The Informer, which will actually upgrade this VHS for me. This is a John Ford film. Some uh, sci-fi with Meteor, which will upgrade this VHS for me. And then uh, I picked this one up because it looked interesting. Revenge film, Monica with a K. Don't know if it's any good, but got that too. Uh, but like I said, I'll show you next what I got uh, from the remainder of that flea market, followed by all the other uh, places I went. And here are the rest of the items from the flea market. which will allow these VHS to be deleted. Went to an antique mall where I got these items. This one is a Warner Archive. And this one will upgrade this VHS. From Dollar General. 
went to a particular antique mall that I go to quite often. Uh, this is one where I get a lot of movies, and you can see they have a lot of movies. This right here is a uh, relatively new booth, showed up sometime in the last year. Uh, all the DVDs are a dollar. If you catch a Blu-ray in there, it's a dollar too. Um, this, this is a booth that I frequent a lot. It's uh, always new stuff being added. Most regular DVDs are a dollar, but there are some uh, slightly higher sealed uh, DVDs for two to three dollars. Um, but anyway, here is what I picked up from that antique mall. One of the Fox Studio Classics. From a Dollar Tree. This one is from Olive. So these VHS can be deleted. Got these at an antique mall. And these two will upgrade these VHS. I went to this antique mall, which I haven't been to in, I don't know, about a year. I didn't do any filming inside, but uh, it is a pretty big antique mall. Where well, I got a lot of movies. Here are some religious films, which are always lots of fun. One Blu-ray there. A lot of these, of course, would be VHS upgrades. Did get one Warner Archive there, and actually found a Blue Underground triple feature that I didn't have, so that was a great find. So yeah, it was a very good day. So these VHS can be deleted. Also for deletion. I made it back to Video Biz, an honest to gosh mom and pop video store in Hancock, Maryland. Um, I couldn't rent anything, but I did look around in hopes of buying something. And all I got was this DVD. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of things there I wanted to buy, or there were things there that were priced a little higher than I wanted to pay, including this. Um, I basically just chose this DVD for $5 to um, support the store. I, wanted to, I didn't want to leave without buying something. But um, anyway, yeah, if you're ever in the area, um, hey, go support a real live actual small mom and pop video store video biz from an antique mall where this is all that i got 
got this Blu-ray to replace this VHS. From a Dollar Tree. From eBay, upgrading some full screen DVDs. For this episode's Pantheon entries, I have two movies to share with you. One of them I just showed you, and that is Screamers from 1995. I specifically picked this up because I wanted to get a better copy of this movie because it was in my Pantheon, not just, not just simply an upgrade. Um, this is a movie that I stumbled upon a few years ago, uh, sat down and watched the VHS tape, hoping just to get a little sci-fi fix and uh, ended up with a real treat. This stars Peter Weller, it's directed by Christian Duguay, uh, screenplay by Dan O'Bannon and uh, Miguel Tejada Flores, based on a short story by Philip K. Dick. So you have quite a lot of uh, pedigree in there. But this is a fun film set in the future, 2078. Uh, Peter Weller plays this um, colonel who is assigned to protect an outpost in space. Unfortunately, there are these man-made um, creatures on this, uh, uh, I don't know, planet, asteroid, wherever he is, I don't remember, who are these little metal creatures who tunnel underground and make a shrieking sound and they come after you and kill you and cut you up. And so it reminds you a little bit of Tremors mixed with, you know, other horror movies. And uh, so this, this movie is basically um, a group of people who are trying to avoid those things, trying to escape. Um, and it's just a fun, uh, fun movie. I really enjoyed that. Um, there is a sequel, by which I have on DVD, which is not as good, but it's still fun. Um, and I, I feel like this is one that um, should be talked about more. It's, it's really good. So uh, Screamers. The last scream you hear will be your own. Second movie that I want to mention that's in my list of favorite movies of all time is this little film, I believe from 1985. The New Kids. This is the Mill Creek uh, VHS Retro Blu-ray. This movie stars uh, Shannon Presby and Lori Laughlin as uh, brother and sister who have a happy life with their father until he dies and they're sent to live with some relatives in Florida these relatives run a carnival and they have to you know enroll in school there there's a um, high school gang leader played by James Spader who goes after Lori Laughlin. She says no, no, no. And so he and his gang are out to get her and her brother and it goes from there. So you have this uh, big showdown at the carnival at the end, which is fun. But I just, I love this movie. Um, it's directed by Sean Cunningham who directed Friday the 13th. I had originally watched this uh, based upon a recommendation I heard on a podcast years ago, and I used to have this on VHS, and when Mill Creek put this out, I jumped on it. So, uh, The New Kids, this is a really fun movie with, you know, uh, teenagers under siege by other teenagers who are out to kill them. So, you know, that sounds like your thing, and you like James Spader as a bad guy, even uh, a young James Spader as a bad guy, with a <laughs> a kind of a hick accent. <laughs> this is this is great. So, new kids, the new kids, check this out. <laughs> So this is the first time I'm featuring this bookshelf segment where I talk really briefly about some movie-related books that I have in my collection that I think are, are interesting or cool or that I recommend. Um, I tend to like a lot of books that are like movie guides where they either take a theme or a genre and they 
do capsule um, reviews or examinations of films. That's generally what I love picking up. But I also pick up other books that are about those films as well. And I figured I'd start with two books that I mentioned um, as recent as last episode. First one I picked up um, around the same time I picked up the House of Psychotic Women box set from Severn. I got the House of Psychotic Women book by Kira Lajanis. And this, I mean, I haven't read this yet. I did start, but then again, I start a lot of books that take me a long time to get through, <laughs> and this will be one of them. Uh, this is uh, uh, an examination, an autobiographical examination of, of um, uh, neurotic women in films, which is a very interesting premise. Um, so that is the first, basically first half of the book. Then you have a midsection where you have a lot of um, movie stills or movie posters, which uh, is cool. And there's even the movie Handgun, which I picked up last, uh, picked up on DVD last episode. But then the last half of the book is a movie movie guide where they take a film give you information about it give you a review information about the film thoughts on the film and that that's the second half of the book and and I love that stuff so this is um, all around a really nice package and uh, it's from fab press who do great work and uh, so I recommend this if any of that sounds interesting but uh, yeah good stuff the other book is one that I mentioned a couple times and this one I have read it's by Grady Hendrix and Chris Pogiali these fists break bricks <laughs> this is how kung fu movies swept America and changed the world so there's kind of a history of uh, Kung Fu movies in the 70s and 80s and um, that's cool but beyond that there's a whole bunch of information and funny little anecdotes uh, little bits of trivia things about those kind of movies and there's lots of pictures in here lots of movie posters as well but there's a whole chapter on Bruce exploitation so you learn about all the different uh, Bruce Lee copycat actors and here's they have the the Bruce directory <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's really informative it um, it certainly shows that these guys did a whole lot of research trying to figure out a lot of the confusion based around these films that are often retitled so many times um, sometimes um, distributors would chop them up and make new films with them so it, it did try to untangle some of that but this is a really fun book if you like kung fu movies i learned a lot and inspired me to watch some films so check this out if that sounds interesting and that is from mondo and yeah that's that's it just a simple quick look at some books that i find to be worthwhile um, so that'll do it for this episode. So until next time, everyone, enjoy your movies.